Welcome back. Looking at some pretty nice skies out there right now, but in about 24 hours, it's going to be a completely different outlook. Uh, that's right. Today, we're looking pretty good. Get out there and enjoy it while you can. As we move into the overnight hours, that's when the clouds are going to roll in before the rain moves in tomorrow through the day. But taking a lot of look now in downtown, making a lot of upper level clouds out there for now. That should clear out as we head towards the afternoon and temperature sitting at 50 degrees. Now crossing that 50 degree threshold started out cool this morning in the 40s as we head in the 3 and 4 o'clock down into the lower 60s and then moving into the evening hours. Once the sun sets, temperatures are going to drop back down once again into the lower 40s. But across the board, 40s as well. 50 now in a few spots. Roberta, Macon, Warner Robins, Unadilla. I said a few, but it looks like majority of the viewing area is now 50 degrees or more and dew point temperatures in the 30s and 40s too. So once again, we're in that winter season. Don't get the chapstick on your way out the door. Winds are in the single digits if not calm. Meanwhile, the radar nice and clear for now. Like I said, we do have those upper level clouds out there like we saw on the sky camera, but the main talking point for tomorrow or main talking point for today will be tomorrow's storm outlook. We're under a level three uh, five. We're looking at the potential threats of a tornado damaging winds and hail, and this will be a different system compared to what we saw Tuesday. Tuesday we saw a line of thunderstorms make their way in. We saw strong wind gusts howling throughout the afternoon and evening hours, and then we saw the potential for tornadoes, but ended up not seeing anything. I think this situation will be different in terms of the dynamics of the squall line that's making its way on in. So let's jump straight into it. First, we're going to look at the sort of zoom out approach. What's happening across the southeast as we move throughout the day today? Like I said, the sun is going to come out. Those upper level clouds are going to move southward. Get out there and enjoy your day on your way home. Don't get the sunglasses because you will need them. Now moving into 2 a.m., to overnight into tomorrow morning. That's when the cloud cover starts to make its way in from the Gulf of Mexico and from off the eastern coast. That's going to sort of fuel the storms that we are going to see as we move into tomorrow afternoon. This is 8 a.m. There's the cold front that's making its way on through a lot of moisture associated with it. But out of front of the system, what you'll see is some isolated storms. And I think that's the biggest difference compared to Tuesday. Tuesday was widespread. Friday afternoon, we're talking about isolated storms back to back. So this is 8 a.m. Getting a closer look at what's going on. Already starting now breezy on your way to school. We should be nice and good to go. Now moving through the day on a Friday, that's when you'll start to see these isolated showers and or storms. The closer we get to 5 o'clock, which is peak heating time during the day, that's the stronger the storms are going to be. So as of 12 p.m., I do not think that we're going to see anything strong or severe just yet but winds are going to be up to 20 miles per hour. And the more we get into the afternoon, the stronger these storms are going to be. So by 3 p.m., I think that's when we start to really see the severe stuff. These little cells that you see, I know that this graph model is not picking up on what could be possible. However, they could really pack a punch talking about hail, strong wind gusts embedded within the storms and heavy rainfall, heavy rainfall in these isolated storms. So moving into 5 p.m., this is actually what we're going to call the squall line. This is the cold front itself. And these cells within the cold front, the line of storms, those are what's going to be the strongest as we move into 5, 6, and 7 o'clock going from the west eastward. By 7 p.m., our eastern counties are going to see these isolated cells. These are the strong stuff that's making its way on through. And then by 9 p.m., we should be all clear. The cold front will be just to our east, and we're back to clear conditions as we move into Saturday morning, making it actually for a really great weekend moving into Saturday. Sunday, we started now cloudy, but the sun does come back out. One thing I do want to touch on before we get to the seven day is a tornado potential. Like I said before, I don't think we'll see the strongest stuff until after two, maybe three o'clock. This is 4 p.m. Starting to see that tornado potential and why this tornado potential covers all of central Georgia is not until these isolated cells make their way on top of this tornado potential that we start to see severe weather happen. So we're still tracking on everything that's going to happen as we move into tomorrow. We get another update around 1.30 as well. So we're tracking that as well. But moving over the next seven days, temperatures are going to warm up tomorrow afternoon, feeling the storms clear by this weekend and more rain chances start next week. Thank you, Jordan. New federal